Hey, Radians here. In this video, I will demonstrate a basic implementation of Magic Link email authentication for Next.js plus Node.js applications. This authentication method is convenient and efficient, simplifying the process for both users and developers by eliminating the need to deal with passwords. While this explanation covers both front-end and back-end basics, remember that this is a simplified solution. If your application manages sensitive information or financial transactions, you would find it prudent to either enhance the security measures detailed here or employ a third-party service. Our discussion relies on the increaser code base. It's kept in a private repository, but rest assured, all the necessary code snippets will be included directly in the blog post in the description. Furthermore, you can find all the reusable hooks, components, and utility tools in the React Kit repository. Let's begin with the frontend. I use the auth providers component on both sign-in and sign-up pages, which displays Facebook and Google authentication options at the top and email auth form at the bottom. You can learn more about our OAuth implementation in my other video. The email auth form component deploys React hook form to manage the form. Also, this can also be achieved without use of library, given the simplicity of having only an email address input. Upon submission, we employ the use mutation hook from React query to forward email address to the GraphQL API. If you are interested in an efficient way to generate and utilize types for your GraphQL projects, feel free to check out my other video here. Before sending the request, we also trigger an analytics event for performance monitoring of our email authentication funnel. Thus, at Increaser, we determined that email authentication has almost the same conversion rate as OAuth options, but more people choose to log in via Google compared to Gmail. After a successful request, we'll direct the user to the email confirmation page, which at Increaser resides under the email confirm route. Within the confirm email auth view component, we retrieve the email from the query parameters using the use handle query prompts hook from React Kit. Here we prompt the user to check the email inbox and provide a return button in case they wish to amend the email address or try other login options. We implement the suggest inbox link function to infer the email client in use. Initially, we extract the provider's name from the email using a basic regex expression. Then we cross-reference the provider against a list of those that offer a web client, returning a link to the inbox if a match is found. For Gmail, we include a search query to highlight emails from the center. Instead of a switch case statement, we use the match function from ReactKit. At this point, the user should receive an email containing a link to the email house page, complete with a special authentication code. We'll delve into email distribution shortly. For now, let's examine the final phase of authentication flow on the front end. The email auth content manages the query parameter through the same use handle query prompts hook. However, this time we'll call the use authenticate with email mutation hook to dispatch the code to the GraphQL API. Here the user is shown either a spinner while the request is still being processed or an error message if something goes wrong. A successful request prompts an immediate redirection for the user to the homepage. To display the status, we render the auth confirmation status component, which is also reused in the OAuth flow. We also provide a prompt to contact support in cases where the user encounters an error. Within the use authenticate with email mutation hook, we use the use API hook that abstracts server interactions to send a request to our GraphQL API. Upon successful request, we'll update the state with the GVT token that we will use to authenticate the user on the front end. We store the GVT token in the local search, after which the use API hook will attach the token to every request to the GraphQL API. The use of the use of session wraps around the use persistent state hook, which is exported upon in my other video. This stage also involves sending analytics event to monitor authentication flow, and this hook is the sole process by which we modify a session state. An essential point of observation is that I disable React strict mode. This prevents the component from rendering during local usage of the app and causing a second API request. If you know a method that prevents a second request while maintaining React strict mode, please share it. From our front-end interaction with the API, it's clear that there must be two GraphQL endpoints managing the email authentication process. The send auth link by email mutation sent an email containing a unique code to the user, while the auth session with the email query authenticates the user and returns a session. 
This includes a GVC token, expiry date, and a flag signifying if it's the user's first time logging in. In the auth session with email input, we include a time zone parameter. This is specific to Increaser and may not be necessary for your application. Next, let's explore the implementation of the send auth link by email mutation. We generate a GVC token for authentication, construct a login URL, which leads to the email auth page on our frontend with an attached auth code as a query parameter, and finally send the user an email comprising the login URL. Creating the code involves a JSON web token library. The token is signed with a secret coming from the get secret function, which varies based on your infrastructure setup. Maybe you can safely use environment variables, or if you operate within AWS, a secret manager, which I've discussed in my other video, could be a good option. The code expires in 20 minutes. We employ the convert duration function from ReactKit to translate this duration from minutes to seconds. I keep my packages in a mono repo where the send login link email function exists within the email package. Here we use the React email library to render the email templates and the send email function to dispatch the emails. My first experience with React email has been very positive. Prior to this, I was using a simple HTML string template that I would send to myself to verify that everything looked as it should. However, React email allows email previewing in the browser and a more comfortable interaction with React as opposed to the novel syntax or other libraries like MGML. The login link email component generates a simple email featuring an app logo, hidden text detailing the link, validity duration, a login button, and the recipient email address. Notably, we are able to import a theme from the UI package to color buttons and text. The font component is used to load the same font as we use on the front end. The render function simply converts the React component to an HTML stream. At Increaser, I use AWS SES to send emails a cost-effective solution that suits my volume. The problematic aspect is that it can't accommodate non-operational emails, as this can quickly lead to crossing the compliant threshold. I'm on the boundary of this while only sending transactional emails without any promotional or marketing content. In future projects, I might try another provider, and the advantage of the monorepo approach is that it's easy to replace the implementation of the send email function in the email package while the other packages continue to function with the new implementation. However, updating environment variables in the packages that would utilize the new provider might be a bit cumbersome. In the send email function, we generate a send email comment, which is sent via a CS client. I depend on the get envar function to access environment variables. It houses a type variable name parameter and throws an error if the specified variable is undefined. The last step is to authenticate with the auth session with email query. Initial validation is carried out before returning a session. The authenticate with email function verifies the GVC token and extracts the email from its payload. The authorized function checks if the user associated with the given email exists in the database, creating one if necessary. It then returns a session with a GVC token, expiration date, and a flag denoting if the user is logged in for the first time using the get out session function. That's all for today. Please like and subscribe if you found this video valuable. Become an effective 10x programmer with my productivity app at increaser.org.